Hi, welcome to this new video. I'm Sergio, a computer union developer, consultant and course instructor, and I help companies, financiers and students to easily and efficiently build computer union projects. We will see today how to build a sequential model with Keras. This is the third video of the series Computer Division with Keras, so if you haven't watched the previous videos, I recommend to watch them to follow correctly also with this one. We will see what is the sequential model, how to build a very basic model uh, with Keras and also some very basic concept about image preprocessing before passing the image uh, to a model. There is nothing more to add right now, let's just go straight into the code. Uh, we will be using this image, so if you haven't got this image already either you can download it, I will put the link down below in the description or you can use your own image, that's that's fine. So you can choose any image you want for this will be fine. Uh, sequential model. Let's now start right away importing Keras. I import Keras. Uh, then one other thing that we want to do is we start right away creating the model. Model equals Keras dot sequential. So now we already created a model. That's how you create a sequential model. In comparison with the functional API where we write the line, so we were writing, for example, layer one, layer one, and then we will add the layer, so dense layer, for example. Right here, we do it different. We have the model and inside the model, we're going to add each layer. So we can do model, dot add and we can choose what layer we want to add so we have of course a lot of different types of layers we have like the dense layer max pooling layer convolutional layers and so on we will not get into the type of layers yet because it will take long so now we want just to have an idea of how to create a model so let's use the easiest layer so the dense layer from Keras, we are going to import layers. So we have the model, model.add, we want to add a dense layer. Layers.dense. And now we define how many neurons has this layer. There is not a specific number that uh, we need to put as neuron that, of course, it depends on the model and even when we have model it's always new models it's always a research in progress so like there is not a real let's say science real math not the, like the perfect number but now let's just put some basic number let's say 32 just to have a layer we have dense layer with 32 let's add now what if we want to add another layer connected to this, we have dense layer, we, dense layer with 32 what if we want to add another layer connected. We add right here, model.add, very easy, and we add another layer, layers.dense, let's say for example, 16 and so on. This way we can create and add on top of, of each other as many layers as we want. Now, you might be wondering, what's the difference from the functional API and the sequential model? Why, why do we have two ways to, to create models? Well, there is a very simple difference with the sequential model. The code is more intuitive, but there is a drawback, and it's that you, you need a sequence of layers on top of each other. So if we want, for example, to split the model here and separate, use this layer to connect to uh, other layers, move multiple layers together, you cannot do that with a sequential model, but you will need to use the functional API. So the sequential model is uh, more intuitive, it's easier to code, but it doesn't allow you much freedom as the functional API. Most of the time in computer vision, for example, for the YOLO models and other models, we will use the uh, sequential models. So it's good to, to know this one. Most like most of the time we will use uh, this one. 
Now let's add something else. Let's add model dot add layers layers dot dance. Let's say two. What we see right here, what is missing at least now, is the input, uh, the input layer. And so let's also add the input layer. Model dot add layers dot input and we need to define a shape now let's go step by step right now as we saw in the previous video the input layer is the one that takes the image and the input layer needs to have the same size of the image so that we take the image and then we process the image inside the network to get some uh, result we go step by step and we see two ways of loading the input layer. But first, let's also work with the image so that we will see some very basic pre-processing of loading an image. So let me put some comment, create a model, a sequential model right here and now load and pre-process pre image. Now, EMG equals, we need to use OpenCV. So we're going to import OpenCV as well, import CV2. Of course, you need to have all the libraries installed and I'm sure that if you are here, you watch also the previous videos. So that's why I'm not saying what you have to do because everything was explained already. EMG equals to CV2.im read. We're going to read the image, which is, I have the image on the same folder it's redpanda.jpg, red underscore panda.jpg. If you have another image, of course, you can use your own image. You can load an image from anywhere on the computer. Uh, just put like here the full path if you want to load an image like this. Just got here an image uh, right here. This one, it's on the pictures folder, so I can just copy this path right here you will copy and paste the full path of your image and that's fine anyway just remember the escape characters uh the slash right here is considered to uh for example go to a new lines and so on so if you put r right here you will avoid doing that so uh, let's stick again to the basic what we wanted to so redpanda.jpg now let's go and let's show the image cv2.im show emg and then emg and cv2.weight key zero so we are showing the image we are keeping the image on hold if we don't put weight key it will just execute the code and then when the code finishes we have nothing more to see so i'm just checking to be sure that i'm loading the, the image correctly before moving further and here we have the image redpanda.jpg what is the size of this image we can print we can get height and width height width and then channels equals emg.shape so if we print height uh, with with and then channels right this way dot format and then we associate height width and channels like this if we print them we will have height 1004 width 1080 channels 3 and we see also that we are getting some error on the input oh, okay of course because i haven't completed the code yet so it's similar to what i explained in the previous video but stick to it because we're going to change something right now and we, we will also make some tests we will try to pass the image through the network to see if everything is working correctly uh we have 
you saw the size of this so we gave to the input shape equals we need to pass height and also width but not only we need also to pass channels height width and channels because the image now has color has three channels if it's um, grayscale it will have only one channel when we work with object detection it will have always three channels because it has more information to work with height width and channels now i'm going to run this just to make sure that uh, the model is not giving any error and then we will move further Oh, now everything is working correctly we associated like the same height and width and channels in the model with the size of the image but we are not we haven't tested yet like the image inside the network so we need now to see if when we put the image inside the network we are going to get some result because if we don't do that we will not have a confirmation that it's working so what we will do right now is result equals model now inside the model we are going to pass our image emg so ideally we shouldn't get any error and we should see some numbers of course this number will mean nothing yet because uh, we will need the training process and more other things but it's already a first step that we need to make sure that works correctly. So let's print now the result. The result must be just numbers that say nothing to us uh, in terms of, of detection or classification or, or anything, but it says that there, there is no error, at least in the structure of the model. So let's now run again the sequential model. And that's what I meant because now we are getting some error and this is crucial when we talk about pre-processing the image in order to pass the image to the network. If we check right here, we see input zero of layer sequential is incompatible with the layer expected shape not 1004, 1020, 80 and three found shape 1004, 1020, 80 and three. In more simple terms, what is this saying? It's saying that we are passing an image which has this, this shape and the image has this shape because it's 1004 pixels of height. So 1004, 1280 pixels of width and three channels because we have three colors, blue, green and red that give us, of course, uh, different shades of color inside the image. We are passing this image to the network. But the network is not expecting this specific size, it's expecting a different shape where we have known 1004, 1020, 80, and 3. This is because normally the, um, the model is expecting a batch size, a batch size because when we trade the model, we can pass multiple images together inside. But we're passing only one image so we need to change a bit the structure structure now so that we pass only one image and and that is of the same shape expected by the model that's why we do some basic pre-processing of the image simply changing the shape and it's very basic what we will do right now is to simply put the image inside an array nothing more so emg let's call this instead of passing emg let's say pre process pre process emg pre processed emg equals to array and then we have emg because uh, we have a batch size when we have multiple images for the training we will use emg1 then emg2 and we will give the images to the network this way as we have only one image we pass just one image this way just one other thing when we give the images to keras but in general when we work with computer vision we never use simple python arrays 
but we use numpy arrays. So we're going to also import import numpy as in pip. You, if you have OpenCV, you have of course uh, numpy installed because numpy is a dependency of OpenCV, and it will it gets installed automatically. So np dot array and then of emg. And inside the result, we're going to pass the pre-processed emg. And let's run this one to make sure that everything is working correctly. And right now you can see that everything is working correctly. We are getting TF tensor, and then we get an array with um, a multiple, a multidimensional array with a lot of numbers. Uh, it doesn't matter what what is this because it's just a model that does nothing, just randomly created. But normally these numbers will mean something uh, when we build some real model. This number will be transformed into the result, whether it's a classification, this number will tell us whether there is a dog in the image, whether there is a car and so on. If it's object detection, they will tell us uh, the position of the object on the in the image or also like the, the, class, the class of the object, so what that object is, the score and so on. So this is all for this uh, specific video. We will see slowly when we get more in depth with this computer vision with Kera series, uh, we will see how to build more advanced things, how to build uh, classification models, how to build detection models. We'll get more in depth into what each layer does, what is the dense layer, what is the convolutional layer, and so on. There is a lot to cover. So take your time, learn slowly, but keep uh, consistent with the learning because that's what matters. This is all for this video. I want also to remember that uh, I have some course if you want to get more practical into computer vision and you want to build real projects even if you're a beginner and you, uh, you have zero experience with computer vision, there is the blueprint that you can uh, find below. It's one hour, it's a workshop, one hour free workshop where I explain how you can build computer vision projects to detect and track any object. This is all for this video. See you in the next one.